from Austin, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Dell World 2015. Brought to you by Dell. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Dell World 2015 here in Austin, Texas. I'm Stu Miniman, joined with my co-host Dave Vellante. Uh, Dave Vellante, fresh off the keynote here, lots of discussion about the Dell acquisition of EMC, the impact it's going to be having to uh, the internal constituents, the customers, and excited to talk also today about what it means to the channel. Uh, so we're proud, proud to have on Scott Winslow, who's the president of the Winslow Technology Group. Scott, uh, thank you for joining us on theCUBE. Yeah, happy to be here. All right, Thanks, so Stu. Scott, you guys were named again the top Northeast channel partner for Dell. Uh, it's your first time on the program. Can you tell our audience that aren't familiar a little bit about uh, Winslow Technologies? I'm, I'm assuming with your name being in the company that you're, <laughs> you're one of the founders or the Quite founder. a creative name, isn't um, it, Winslow Technology so Group. So tell us a little bit about your business. Uh, yeah, we were founded in uh, November of 2003, so we're 12 years old now. We're a, a VAR and a solution provider. Uh, located in the Northeast, but uh, we're in, we have uh, installs in 30 different states now. Um, but we're uh, focused on storage, servers, networking, security, uh, virtualization. Uh, we have uh, came over to Dell through the Compellent acquisition, so we're kind of a boutique uh, storage play, and then uh, with the Compellent acquisition, Q1 of 2011, uh, we became a Dell partner for the first time. It's been uh, a heck of a ride. Saw well, Phil Soren on Twitter this morning, Stu. Yeah, yeah, Phil's a mentor of mine. Yeah, yeah. Phil so, is an amazing guy. Yeah. So, you know, Scott, I think back 2003, storage networking was really early. Yeah. VMware was really early. Cloud was not something we talked about from an IT standpoint. T talk to us, you know, what, what are kind of some of the key drivers in your business today? Yeah, well, um, you know, certainly uh, infrastructure upgrades, you know, you know, whether it's VDI, whether it's OpenStack, uh, anybody that's got an appetite for infrastructure upgrades and the, the services related to it, we're putting together solutions uh, for those customers. So, um, you know, we've been a Dell partner, like I said, since 2011, uh, came over uh, through the Compellent acquisition. We were really kind of a boutique storage play and uh, with the Dell acquisition, we've become very proficient in the rest of the Dell line, uh, storage, networking, et cetera, uh, and allowed us to really become a, a full uh, solution provider. So you started as a storage specialist. Yes, exactly. Glommed on to Compellent. Right. Pretty, pretty bold move back in the mid 2000s, we right? We carried the flag for them in EMC's backyard. Although again, betting on Phil Soren and company is uh, Larry Asman and those folks, not a, not a bad play. Yep. Um, and then they sort of popularized the whole tiering thing. They had mainframe class sort of capabilities Yep. for the SMB, perfect acquisition for Dell. How did you, talk about the transformation into sort of the broader Tell Dell product line, into servers, into other software areas. How did, how did that all take place and what do you sell today? Yeah, I'd love to tell you that it was a grand plan on our part. I, I can remember the conversation I had with our channel account manager, uh, Brian O'Leary at the time, and he said, you are leaving server business on the table, nobody's doing you know, uh, four or five million dollars a year in storage and, and selling $500,000 a year in servers. We, we got to get ramped up from a training standpoint. And that's exactly what we've done, you know. So that was kind of uh, how we grew into it. You know, from a customer standpoint, they were yearning for uh, a broader, for us to offer a broader portfolio. And, uh, you know, it just became a very nice match. So I remember saying to Phil Soren, you know, fine fix you've got us in here now, Phil. We were paired up with this small little compellent, you supported us so well, and now with the Dell acquisition, what are we going to do? And Phil's advice was jump in with Dell, learn their products, become relevant to them, you know compellent better than anybody, and they're going to need that. And that's exactly the path we followed that Phil gave us probably four or five years ago at this but point. As a, but as a relatively small specialist at the time, yeah. you must have been sort of polluted by the, I mean, polluted is not the right word, but you must have felt that, that that anxiety of the conventional wisdom of the Dell channel partners. Dell, sure. Dell goes direct, Dell hates the channel. So, myths? Talk about, yeah. you know, you know I what think, changed. Well, I think it was a perfect storm. I think Dell was fighting that reputation and what they did to uh, counter that was to put together the best channel program in the industry. Really, you feel a that way? I, absolutely. Well, I mean, what makes it the best? Oh, the rebate program, the do more rebate program. You know, we have goals where we've got to hit 50% growth target on server storage and networking, and if you hit them, it can be very meaningful to your business. Um, providing uh, gear for uh, pretty much free so that we can do uh, proof of concepts. We got a lot of 
a lot of really strong engineering resources at our company, a lot of them were former end users. They like to try things before they buy. Our customers like to do that, and Dell provided us with you know, really a, a cache of inventory, whether it's uh, Force 10 networking or now Dell N-Series, Compellent, FX2, Vertex, and we bring it into customers, show them how to use it, and uh, you know, it's a good chance for our engineers to work with uh, the end users. So you want to do a so. proof of concept, and one of the complaints yeah. the channel often has is, I can't get the gear. Yeah. I can't get the proof of concept in. It takes yeah. you know, months. What's your experience been with Dell in that regard? Well, again, because I think Dell was fighting that Dell Direct image, and they really had to show channel partners they were in it to win it, so great do more rebate program. Uh, they provided inventory uh, very easily. As long as you can show them, you can go in and win, and you're going to represent them. I mean, Dell is looking for three or four things for a partner. They want you to be loyal. They want you to have some really good technical chops to help them win. They want you to forecast really well, and they want you to communicate you know, with them what's going on and work uh, in a uh, symbiotic fashion with their, with their inside and outside sales teams. If you can do that, you're going to be in good shape and that's how we've grown the company to be, we'll do $20 million in revenue this year uh, and you know, when we started with Dell, we were a you know, $6 million a year company. And you founder of the company? I did, yeah, founder. That's and, uh, awesome, president. congratulations. Thank you, yeah, 23 employees and uh, I think with the CMC acquisition, we're going to see the same trajectory. Yeah, so, I'm really excited about so it. So the loyalty thing seems you got that down. Yeah. Uh, technical chops, talk about where you get your technical chops. Maybe give us some color on that. Uh, just, um, we, we've uh, had former uh, users. Uh, it, a lot of times it was uh, our best references. So we'd, be, we'd use our end users as references and uh, we'd make sales because they'd say, hey, we're using Compellent. This is how we're using the uh, data progression. This is how we're using the live volume, the remote replication. And when we found there were really good references, when they become available, because you can't be stealing people from your customers, but if they were in a position where they became available, we'd try to grab those resources and we've taken them from the end user side over to the vendor side. Even some of our salespeople, half of our sales force were former end users. So they're really sales engineers. And uh, what, a, what a combination that is, when you can manage the relationship but also have the technical goods. And, and what's your forecasting secret? Is it to under promise and over deliver or is it to just have an intimate relationship with the customer and actually know when you're going to close a deal? Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, I'm a big believer in under promise and over deliver. That's definitely a, a term that we use a lot. But I think for us in communicating with Dell, it's just making sure the sales force is uh, updated all the time. We have weekly calls to update the uh, forecast. We have bi-weekly drop-in meetings so their sales team can come in and we just update them in person. Uh, we have a team from Northeastern, we do a lot with the Northeastern Co-op program and we use those folks as inside sales reps and business development reps uh, and, and they can handle those responsibilities. So kind of Northeastern's great. Yeah. I want my kids, my wife went to Northeastern, John, really? John went to Northeastern, I want my kids to go. Talk about college ROI, Northeastern has the, exactly. the model down. <laughs> you get the, those students, you get them for six months. I mean, yeah, two clubs means you can, you can uh, fill an inside sales position for a year. It's incredible. And Strategic now, advantage. Let's talk a little bit more about the EMC uh, acquisition yeah. and, and what that means for you guys. We've yeah. talked to some channel partners who are, who are afraid. Yeah. Uh, we were talking to Cheryl, who you know, runs channels for, for Dell earlier, sure. and saying, you know, channel partners are afraid Dell's going to come in with EMC end to end, just suck in the customer and do you know, kickbacks, and you won't be able to compete with that. You don't seem concerned at all. What's your take um, on that? Well, position? my first take was, wow, holy moly. Yeah. I can't believe it happened. Yeah, that was um, everybody's, I think. Well, if you look at Michael's acquisition history, you know, you see that he bought Ecologic and Compellent. He didn't buy 3PAR, he didn't buy Data Domain. He went more for the billion dollar. I think Ecologic was 1.2, Compellent was under a billion. You know, he, he didn't go for the 3PARs and ice lawns of the world and the Data Domain. Well, he tried, but it got too rich, right? Yeah, small exactly. Tuck -ins well, exactly. And, and so he went for Apishore in the backup space, not Comball. Right, so when you look at that, and you know, I had people say, do you think this is going to happen? I'm like, no way. There's just, if you look at the history, he's, been, he's gotten great value. I think he's kind of been a value player in the acquisition market. And then to drop a $67 billion card uh, with that background, to me was you know, eye-opening and really surprising. It was a wow moment. I didn't think it would happen. Uh, but now that it has happened, and I think the reason it happened is the privatization. I don't think as a publicly held company, uh, they could do it, but I think it's a privately held company that was doing very well, that was paying down their debt more quickly than they had even anticipated. You know, Michael's a bold guy, uh, he's making a bold move, and it, it actually, it really surprised me. But now, you know, we are on board. Uh, and so my take on it is, 
we're the best partner Dell has in the Northeast. You know, we think we're the best in the country. But hey, we're 20 minutes from Hockington. Here we are, guys. Let's go. EMC needs good partners. I know people that work in EMC, they're always complaining about they need better partners. I think we can provide that. We've learned the whole Dell portfolio. We've been studying Dell for the last five years. We know them better than anybody. We can tell those guys about Dell, but we're going to say, listen guys, we want to jump in and learn the whole portfolio. There's a lot of complementary products there. VMAX, Isilon, uh, Extreme IO. Um, there are products that they have that are going to get us, as a reseller, a seat at the table. I talked to two large insurance companies in Hartford last week, and they said, man, Scott, we love working with you, your team's great, but we never thought you had the portfolio at the very high end. If, if this thing happens, you're going to have a seat at the table with us for some bigger discussions. So, Scott, so, you know, that's exciting. One, one, of the, one of the questions uh, in the keynote this morning is, Dell and EMC come together. Yeah. What about the public cloud? So Satya Nadella was on stage talking about the great Microsoft and Dell partnership, yeah. but many of the punditry talk about how Dell and EMC don't really have an answer to what AWS yeah. is doing. So mm -hmm. you know, you're talking to customers every day, you're working with them, selling them lots of infrastructure. Yeah. Where are they with the public cloud discussion and, and, and how, how does hybrid cloud look to them? I think it's a great question. I think you know, Michael's answer to it was there's 160 million different workloads and we see you know, 15 to 20 million of those in the public cloud. So it sounds to me like his bet is He's betting, you know, he wants to be the provider to those public cloud providers, to be providing the Amazons and, and Azures of the world, the infrastructure, and he's betting strongly on that other 80% that's the private cloud or the hybrid cloud. Um, I'll, I'll go with that bet. Um, so I, I think that's where it's going to play yeah, out. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't seem like, you know, Dell is going to move in that public yeah. cloud direction if I read between the lines yeah. correctly. I'm, I'm just saying, go, yeah. go into your customers. I'm sure many of your customers use an Office 365 now. Sure. And they're, they're all using Salesforce. Yeah. Uh, and they're all using AWS in some way or another. Yeah. So is it trickling into the infrastructure discussions or is it still kind of business users, almost stealth IT managing uh, those pieces of, yeah, I of think the it's, discussion? Yeah, I think it's trickling into the discussions, but I think you know, you've got to look at the overall market and the size of the market and say, okay, you know, we can be a player here in the private and the hybrid cloud um, and you know, let the public cloud kind of go the, the, the way that it does with the Amazons of the world. All right, cool. Well, yeah. listen. Really appreciate you coming yeah. on, sharing your perspectives. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, give me the last word. Um, what should we be looking for over the next you know, 12, 18 months? You got this big EMC acquisition coming on. You got, you know, as Stu's talking about the public cloud. What should the observers of this industry be paying attention to? One word, coopetition. <laughs> That's what we should be looking for. I mean, I mean, watching uh, Tushi and, and Michael Dell there together it was like, seeing you know, Brian Cashman and Dave Dombrowski from the Red, the Red Sox and the Yankees <laughs> are getting together. I mean, nobody knows you know, who the enemy is anymore, uh, right? You know, somebody brought up HP and Michael said, hey, they're a big, they're a big customer of ours now. <laughs> they're a big VMware customer. So, you know, everybody uh, is, you know, is this competition everywhere. Um, the Microsoft CEO was on the stage today. They're developing, uh, you know, PCs. They're going to compete with Michael <laughs> in that area. So I think I think cooperation is the word. That Joe called Michael yeah. uh, brother from another mother. So. Yeah. Well, VCE too, right? Yeah. So they're going to continue VCE with Cisco. So I don't know, you know, I don't know who the uh, rival is anymore, like the Red Sox and the Yankees. It's going to get crazy. Yeah. All right. All right thanks folks. very much for coming to the Cube. Okay. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. Back with our next guest. We're live from Dell World, 2015. This is the Cube. <laughs>